Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to listen to this video talking about how to grow herbs in our area. My name is Dawn Henderson and I am the former Horticulture Program Coordinator with ISU Extension and Outreach for Sue O'Brien, Lyon, and Osceola Counties. And today I wanted to talk to you all about how to grow herbs, how you know when to harvest them, and a little bit on how to store them uh, and keep them good to use throughout the year. So thank you again for tuning in. So if you have questions on growing these herbs after this presentation, Iowa State does have several resources, uh, whether it's at the store, which here's the address, store.extension.iastate.edu, or on the Spend Smart, Eat Smart page, uh, also an extension resource and has hundreds of different options of how you can use herbs in cooking and how you can store them. If you do have questions on preserving and or cooking with the herbs, you can again refer to the Spend Smart, Eat Smart page, or you can contact Renee Swears. She's the human sciences specialist out of Woodbury County. She covers Northwest Iowa, and she talks about everything food and safety and preservation and nutrition. So she would be the best person to talk to about that. I'm giving you these resources as I have now left my position with Extension to pursue a career in conservation. So I am no longer available for questions, but Iowa State has tons of <clears throat> tons and tons of resources out there uh, that you can read, find, and save for future use. So let's get started. We'll start with dill. Dill is probably one of my absolute personal favorites. Uh, I love pickles, pickling. That's commonly what dill is used for, but it can be used in a host of other different things with cooking. Its habitat is actually um, very similar to Southwest Asia, as that's where it's from. So it likes full, full sun and very well-drained soil in order to be happy. It is an annual, however, it very, very often will reseed, especially when you just leave it and let it go to flower. This picture of a plant is actually a volunteer plant in one of our gardens. So we have a, a fun little patch of dill that has just decided to spring up right there because it reseeded last year. Like I said, it, for growing dill, it does require full sun, well-drained soil. The biggest thing with growing dill is that it wants to be direct seeded. It does not transplant well. It is one that does not like its roots messed with. So if you want to start a patch, you're best off buying seed and just starting it on your own rather than buying a pack of transplants. In order to harvest it, you can pinch or cut the leaves off once it's about five to six inches in height, and then you are good to harvest or you can let it go to seed. Those leaves are usable all the way until it goes to seed. And then you can harvest the seeds after it's done flowering and use those as well. To store dill, you can either store it fresh in the refrigerator for up to two weeks, or you can dry it and store it in an airtight container for up to six months. It will retain its flavor fairly well. Uh, it has a very strong flavor profile. So either of those is a excellent option for storing dill. Our next one is also a very popular one. It is basil. So this one is native to the tropics, specifically Central Africa and Southeast Asia. So it likes high light, it likes high humidity, and does not really tolerate cold. Basil is an annual, uh, so it will die off every year, whether it gets frozen off in the cold or uh, it just completes its life cycle but you can start new plants from cuttings of old plants, or you can start it from seeds. Basil does tolerate being transplanted very, very well. So you have all of the options in order to be successful when growing your basil. Like I said, it does not tolerate cold at all. So once our evening temperatures start dipping below 50 degrees, you're going to see a lot of basil die off uh, and those leaves will not be as prime for harvesting as they would have been before that drop in temperature. Speaking of picking those leaves, as you pick more leaves, it encourages growth. Once they get about four to six inches tall, you can pinch off that main stem and leave two to three sets of leaves, and it will encourage a bushier plant rather than a taller plant. Another thing you can do to encourage growth is removing the flower stem. Uh, once we start to heat up Quite a bit it will send up a flower and you can just continue to pinch off that flower you can use those flowers in flavoring it has a little bit more mild of a flavor than the leaves do uh, but by pinching off that flower you're encouraging that vegetative growth rather than those flowers 
Basil is one that you can store either fresh, frozen, or dried. All three work just as well. Skipped a slide there, whoops. Chives is our next one, as you can see here. The habitat is actually native to grasslands, and that includes North America. So chives uh, is one herb that we use that it comes from where we live. It's typically found growing near riverbanks and on grasslands, uh, so it is perfectly adapted to grow here in Iowa. It is a perennial and it is winter hardy. So once you establish a chive patch, it will continue to grow and continue to reproduce year after year. Now, af after every two to three years, you will need to divide the root mass to in continue encouraging that new and healthy growth. Um, but it will come back year after year. You don't have to reseed it. In order to have the best growing uh, conditions, it is, like I said, best to divide the root mass and it does go dormant in high heat. So the best times to harvest chives uh, is to harvest a large majority of the patch in early summer or late spring. And then again in the fall when we start cooling down, it will start growing again and you can harvest another round of it. So to harvest it, you can harvest both the flower and the stem. The beautiful purple flowers are edible. You cut it down to the base whenever you pick it. And by cutting it all the way down to the base, it then encourages that new fresh growth to come up. Chives are one that are best, um, best stored fresh or frozen. Drying them out is perfectly fine, except they do tend to lose quite a bit of their trademark flavor when you dry them. So storing them fresh or frozen is the best way to get that beautiful oniony flavor that you're looking for with chives. Now our next one is cilantro. This one can be slightly polarizing. Some people say it tastes like soap. I am one of those that enjoys cilantro in a lot of my fresh vegetable dishes in the summer. It is native to the Mediterranean area uh, and so you'll find it in a lot of Mediterranean cuisine because of that. It is an annual, so it won't uh, continue growing from year to year, but it is a very easy one to start from seed and has a very, very fast life cycle. Um, you'll notice in the spring, I no already noticed that several of my plants um, have gone to flower and to seed and it's only mid-June. So. They are very, very fast growing, and it's best to pick those leaves when the plants are very, very small. And to keep them small, you continue picking leaves. Once cilantro does bolt, allow it to go to seed because those leaves are going to be very bitter and are not going to be um, the best to use when cooking. Once you do let it go to seed, you can also harvest these seeds much like you would harvest dill seeds. Uh, and then that becomes a different spice called coriander. But you can use the whole plant of the seeds, the stems, and the leaves are all excellent to use when cooking. To store these, drying is your best option. You can keep it fresh for a little while, but especially with the seeds, drying them is the best way to preserve their flavor and then use them throughout the year. Our next one is sage. This one is um, native to more of a desert type environment, also around the Mediterranean area close to Europe and Africa. It is a perennial, however, it is not cold hardy. So for us here in Iowa, we treat it as an annual and we'll replant it every year. Uh, at least that's the experience I have had with it. It is an excellent one to grow in a container because it is a perennial, you just have to bring it inside every year. Uh, if you do wanna start a new plant, starting from seeds is rather difficult. I did start this plant in the photo to the left from seed and it took a very long time to get started and get growing. And I planted probably 15 seeds. And as you can see, I only have one successful. So in order to grow it, it is best to transplant and split off a root mass from a mother plant. Uh, you can have success with seeds, but it is best to split it off from an existing plant. Since it is also from the de desert and Mediterranean area, again, it likes that full sun it loves dry soil over wet, so don't overwater, and you can allow it to really get good and dry in between each watering. In order to harvest, if you are starting them from seed, harvest them very lightly in the first year. 
So if I wanted to pick some sage from this brand new little seedling I have here, I might pick one or two leaves off of it, but I really want to let it get established until the next year before I really start picking off of it. So with sage, then you can pick heavily up to three times a season and the plant will be perfectly healthy and perfectly fine. Uh, one is this is one not to overpick, uh, especially since it is a perennial that lives off a root system repetitively. It is best to make sure it has some leaves to continue producing food for those roots. To store sage, it's best when fresh. So using the subtle flavor of sage right off the plant is best. I know it's very popular in drinks and in Mediterranean cuisine as it's from the area. You can freeze it. Sage is one that does tend to lose its flavor when dry, but it is used in many recipes and adds just an excellent depth of flavor as well. Our next one is oregano. This one again is also native to that Mediterranean area. Uh, you might be noticing a trend I have for sure. So like the other Mediterranean area plants, it needs full sun, uh, fairly well-drained soil. This one, much like sage, is a perennial. It does reseed itself from year to year, but this, because it is a perennial, it also makes for a great container herb and can be grown in your kitchen and then brought inside over winter excuse me it can be grown outside over the summer and then brought into your kitchen over winter to keep it healthy and growing all year round so in order to start it you can start it from seeds cuttings or from dividing a mother plant all three of these is an excellent option cuttings tend to be the most successful or divisions um, but much like the sage i started a pot of oregano from seed and i had a much higher success rate with oregano from seed than I did with sage. So whatever is most available to you, go ahead and use. Like I said, full sun, um, it does like that full sun. The more sun it gets, the stronger the flavor will be. So if you want that really strong flavor of oregano to come through and if whatever you use, make sure it gets that full sun six to eight hours a day or more. Uh, also, to get the most flavor from these leaves, harvest them right before they flower out. So right as they're about to push those buds out is the best time to harvest those leaves and stems to use, whether it's for drying or freezing or fresh. And the more often you trim it, the more branching it will, it will have, much like the basil I talked about earlier, removing that central stem and continuing to harvest will encourage more growth to happen throughout the entire plant. Now storing oregano is a good one to store fresh, frozen, or dried. Um, I particularly prefer dried oregano over the other two, just because it's easier to grab and use in most of my dishes. Our next one we have here is thyme. Now this one is also native to the subtropics, uh, kind of that Mediterranean area that we've already been looking at. It is a perennial, however, it is an annual in Iowa because it is not winter hardy. So while it would come back year after year in a warmer climate, here it will die off over the winter. But that means as a perennial, you can grow it in a container and have it outside during the summer and then move it inside during the winter in order to have fresh green herbs all year long. Since it is native to the subtropics, it is drought tolerant and wants full sun as much as it can. So it does not want wet feet and it wants bright light, uh, much like oregano and sage that we've talked about. This one is another one that is best to start from cuttings. You can try and start it from seed. I have not personally tried. However, it is best to start it from those cuttings or a root division from a mother plant. Uh, that is going to give you the best success when establishing a pot of thyme. To harvest thyme, much like oregano I was just talking about, it is most flavorful right before it blooms. So watch for those flower buds and then you can go ahead and pick those sprigs. That's when they're going to be the most packed with flavor. You can use the flowers, the stems and the leaves. Uh, so you don't have to sit there and pick off all those tiny little leaves one by one and leave the stems. You can pick the whole sprig and use. To store thyme, it is best fresh, frozen, or dried, so any of the three options. It retains its flavor very, very well as long as it is stored correctly. 
So it's one of those that it doesn't really matter if you use it fresh, frozen, or dried, you'll get that same distinct thyme flavor from all three options. Now mint. Mint is a very, very popular one and for good reason. Uh, it is an excellent addition to any herb garden. It is native to Europe and Asia, uh, kind of that same area that we've been looking at a lot today. It is a perennial and it is winter hardy. So if you plant a patch of mint, it will overwinter here in Iowa from one year to the next, which can be a good and a bad thing. Mint is uh, best replanted from transplants. I've never tried starting it from seeds personally. Uh, I've always gotten cuttings or root divisions from friends and family. So transplants tend to be the best way to start your own mint patch. However, a warning on mint is that it has a very, very aggressive root system and may take over an area very quickly. So the best way to contain it in a garden or a flower bed is actually to plant it in a pot and then plant that pot in the ground. And then you can pull it out every year or you can leave it there to overwinter. But by containing those roots, it will not become invasive and will not take over your garden quite as quickly. So that's just one thing to keep an eye on with mint. With harvesting, you can pick the leaves frequently as needed. Uh, there's really no specifics when it comes to mint. You can use the stems, the leaves, and the flowers, uh, and they are all very flavorful, flavorful, excuse me, and have that trademark mint flavor. To store it, it is best fresh or dried. Uh, dried mint is phenomenal. Uh, I tend to prefer fresh mint personally, but it does dry very well. A fun idea that you can try with freezing, I know mint is used in a lot of summertime drinks, whether it's minty lemonade or just a nice refreshing mint water. You can try uh, freezing mint leaves in ice cubes. So then as the ice cube melts, so does the mint and your whole drink becomes infused with that wonderful fresh flavor. Our next one is rosemary. This one, we're going back to the Mediterranean again. Uh, it is a very common, it is actually, here's your fun fact about rosemary, it is related to mint. So they are actually very closely related. Much like mint, it is also a perennial. However, this one does not have the aggressive root system that mint does, and it will die off over winter here in Iowa. So if you wanted another perennial container herb, this is an excellent option of letting it grow outside during the summer and then bringing it indoors over the winter uh, and it will survive from year to year. It is best to start it from cuttings, uh, much like the sage and the oregano we talked about. Seeds are not always the best option for getting it to start, so cuttings or root divisions is the best way to get going with rosemary. Now, because it is from the Mediterranean, it, does, it is a little bit particular on what it likes. It likes a higher level of humidity but it does not want wet soil. It does not want its feet sitting in a lot of water. So it wants the air around it to be high in moisture, but it will tolerate dry soil very, very well. To harvest rosemary, the young stems and leaves are going to be the most flavorful and the best to use. You can harvest up to a third of the plant at a time and then let it grow back and replace all of those leaves before picking again. To store rosemary to retain the best flavor, fresh or dried is going to be your best options. I know I have probably two jars of dried rosemary in my cupboard at the moment uh, just because it is an excellent one that will hold its flavor through that preservation process. So I've talked quite a bit about storing herbs, um, whether it's dried, fresh or frozen, how different herbs retain their flavor through each process, uh, but just to talk a little bit more specifically on how to store those herbs, wash and dry everything you pick very thoroughly. Wash it, wash it very, very well, and then allow it to air dry very, very well before doing anything. That's just food safety aspect. Do that with just about everything you bring through your door and you will be good to go. Once it is washed and dried, you can use two methods to dry it out. You can either hang it to dry in a dark and very well ventilated room, or you can use an electric dehydrator uh, to speed it up. 
If you hang it in the dark and well ventilated room, it can take days to weeks to really truly get fully dry and crispy. But with a dehydrator, it can take less than a day to get all of that moisture out and make sure it is fully safe to be stored winter all winter long. So store all those leaves and stems in airtight containers once they are completely dry. You can remove the leaves from the stems, or I know several people who leave the leaves on the stems for things like rosemary and thyme, uh, just to throw in a full sprig into whatever they're cooking. Another idea that you could use it for, I talked a lot about freezing herbs, which is one that I tend to not think of very often. However, a great idea is using those fresh leaves, you blend them up and then you can combine them with an olive oil or a water and freeze them in an ice cube tray. Then when you're making a pesto or a want to fry something in oil with that flavor of say basil, you can just take that ice cube out, put it in the tray, allow it to melt and you have already infused oil, all ready and good to go. So these are just a couple options of how you can save and use your herbs year round rather than feeling the pressure of having to use them fresh. Another option for having fresh herbs I talked a little bit about is having that winter container garden. Some of those perennials can be moved inside. They will grow much slower. Some of them may go dormant over the winter, but having a perennial herb garden is a fun way to have fresh and green, even when everything outside is brown and white. So like I said, I am no longer with Extension, but if you do have questions on anything relating to horticulture, gardening, herbs, anything along those lines, the state of Iowa does have a horticulture question line set up down on campus. There is their email, hortline at iastate.edu. Their phone number is also listed there that you can give them a call. Since they are serving the state, it may take them a day to get back to you, but they will get back to you and answer any questions you do have. I thank you for tuning in and checking out this presentation on herbs, and I hope you learned something new that you can take with you. Thank you very much. My name is Don Henderson, and I am the former Horticulture Program Coordinator with ISU Extension and Outreach.